program completer ceremony, where we will celebrate the accomplishments of students that have persevered through many obstacles to cross the finish line to their career and technical education program and earn the accolade of being a completer. One who starts and finishes, one who has realized their goal, and one who took advantage of the best experience that we could provide them during a pandemic. This virtual program of celebration is followed tomorrow with an in-person celebration. I invite all students and families that have completed a program to come to Edison tomorrow morning at your designated program time to receive your graduation stole, certificate of completion, yard sign and gift bag. You will remain in your car during the drive through the bus loop for social distancing reasons and drive around the bus loop to receive your items. If you choose, we will have a photo opportunity set up at the back of the building as well. During our program this evening, you will hear from our MCPS director from the Department of College and Career Readiness, you will hear from Edison graduates who reflect on how their Edison experience laid the foundation for their career path. And you will hear from current Edison students about their accomplishments. We will recognize each of the 401 students who completed a program of study this school year, and also the 48 seniors who completed a program of study last year. Student names are located on slides with the program that they have completed. At this time, we will hear from Mr. Scott Murphy. Good evening, Thomas Edison High School students, soon to be graduates and program completers. My name is Scott Murphy, Director of College and Career Readiness at MCPS, and it is my honor to be a part of your celebration this evening. On behalf of MCPS, I would like to congratulate you on completing your program of study and also on your accomplishments throughout your educational career, especially this year, given the challenges of the pandemic and virtual learning. At Thomas Edison High School, you have completed a rigorous career pathway that will undoubtedly prepare you for life after high school. By completing your program, you are showing future employers and the world that you are ready for the next step, a good paying job, a pathway to a successful career, additional studies after high school, and preparation in a specific industry that is looking for highly skilled and capable employees like you. In the wake of the pandemic, jobs and the economy will continue to change. Economic recovery after the pandemic will speed up the pace at which the world of work is changing, and it will increase the requirements to be a competitive job seeker. By completing this program, you now have the competitive edge to be among the highest qualified for future jobs and the most rigorous opportunities for post-secondary studies. This economy will require ongoing learning and advancement, so I encourage you to continue seeking additional certifications, job experiences, apprenticeships, and other opportunities with your employers in the future. I would also like to thank the staff at Thomas Edison, Ms. Carias, the leadership team, and all of the teachers and staff who understand what it takes to prepare you for the careers of the future. And thank you to our business partners who provide our students with real life experiences in the work setting every year. Once again, to our students completing a program of study, you faced unprecedented challenges this year. Completing your program, the challenges of virtual learning, and in many cases, probably working a job as well. But with all of these challenges, you have once again demonstrated your commitment to success, persistence, and a strong work ethic, the same traits that will make you successful in a career. Once again, congratulations on completing your program of study. MCPS is very proud of you and looks forward to the great things that lie ahead in your career path. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this celebration and all the best for your continued success. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Deborah Muggy, principal of Wheaton High School and Thomas Edison High School of Technology. 
I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of myself and my high school principal colleagues to say congratulations on your accomplishments. Not only have you navigated high school through a pandemic, you navigated, you navigated two high schools, and some of you even na navigated Montgomery College on top of that. So what I want to say is we wish you well. We know you're prepared for all your future endeavors and just go out and make the world a better place to live. Thank you. Good evening. I am Heather Correas. I am, the, I am proud to have served as your principal intern this school year and look forward to continuing to lead next year as the supervisor of Thomas Edison High School of Technology. I encountered a quote recently that captured what many of us have experienced during the pandemic and how these difficult times have strengthened us and made us now a better version of ourselves that we are today. The quote reads, the most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen. I regard each of our students as beautiful people because they have known the struggle of finding daily motivation to flip that computer screen open to be greeted with another Zoom session. You selected the Edison experience prior to the pandemic when you thought your learning would entail working on a car, at a house site, in the kitchen, at Walter Reed, or in a salon. However, when the venue of your learning changed, you trusted your teachers to bring you teaching in a different way and they work tirelessly to do that for you. When encountering defeat this year, an experience shared by us all, you leaned on those support networks that were in place to sustain you. You persevered and you refused to give up. And because of that, you will know that when you experience defeat again, you are equipped to navigate it. And through loss, I hope that you have recognized the gift of life, a life that each of you seizes the opportunity a life where each of you seizes the opportunities that lie ahead, just as you have done at Edison. A life where you know the knowledge and gifts that you have earned here to further your career and continue on to college. Congratulations to each of the students that are being recognized this evening. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Jeanette Brooks and I am the proud assistant principal of Thomas Edison High School of Technology. It has been an absolute pleasure getting to know our Thomas Edison families, students and staff this year. I am exceptionally proud of the success students in each of the clusters have accomplished by completing their program. I would like to say to each of our program completers, well done and we are so proud of you. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Sharon Carlton and I am the program coordinator at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. And I say to the students in this moment in this hour, tonight is your night. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce <laughs> the first of two guest speakers, Mr. Paul C, who graduated from Rockville High School in 2014 and is a completer of the HVAC program at Edison. He is currently employed at Shapiro and Duncan. Hey, Edison uh, students and staff, uh, today is an exciting day. Um, it, it's an honor to be able to speak to you all today. Um, I, I know what you're thinking, you know, who is this person on the screen and, and who is he? Uh, well, my name is Paul, and I too was a student at Edison back in 2004. Um, and, and how I stumbled into the Edison program was, was really by sheer luck. Um, you see, I wasn't really that great of a student um, as I was going through uh, middle school and high school. Uh, as all my friends were, were going through college ap applications and uh, doing their SATs, um, I was really out goofing off. I, I had no plans beyond high school, and I really didn't really think about it. Um, that was until I talked to my counselor uh, and she had told me about the Edison program and 
you know, it didn't really take a whole lot of convincing because I, I didn't have a plan. Uh, and I, I signed up for the heating, ventilation, air conditioning program at, at Edison. Um, and immediately after finishing the program, I was contacted by Shapiro Duncan, um, one of the best mechanical contractors in the DMV. And Shapiro Duncan offered me a um, fully paid apprenticeship program um, that, that lasted four years. And I, as soon as I heard the, the opportunity, I, uh, I jumped on it and uh, I didn't hesitate at all. I started working full time just weeks after graduation. And as I went on to, uh, to complete the, the apprenticeship program, I, uh, in, in my day, during the daytime, I uh, started running smaller projects as a foreman. And fast forward a couple of years, uh, I was given the opportunity to, to be able to go into the office as part of the project management staff. Um, and just worked my way up the, the ladder and eventually became a, a full-on project manager and started managing some of the biggest projects at Shapiro and Duncan. So not only did Edison provide me, you know, the, the knowledge to start my career, it, it, it also gave me a lot of, uh, it also taught me a lot of uh, core values that I took with me along to the construction industry. Um, values like treating others the way you want to be treated, uh, ask, not being afraid to ask questions, um, and, and not giving up. So as you embark onto the next chapters of your lives, um, there, there will be challenges and there's going to be difficult times that you got to get through. Um, and you're, there's going to be times where you fail. But I think it's important for, for you to understand that, you know, failing is just part of life and part of the learning process. Um, and it's, it's very important for you to, to continue learning throughout your career, um, but, and, but never ever stopping. Um, and believe me when I say this, you know, no matter how tough the times get, um, you, you will make it through. As long as you're not, you're willing to not give up, you will get through it. No matter where you end up in your career, uh, just know that, you know, always remember where you came from. Uh, that, that keeps you grounded. It's, it's kept me grounded this, uh, this whole time uh, after, you know, many, many years, you know, more than a decade later. You know, I still think back to, to the classes that I had at Edison um, and how grateful I am for, for the education. So I know for a fact that you are all now, you know, carrying the knowledge and skills you need to uh, move on to the next step in, in your lives, whether that's a uh, two-year college program, a four-year college program, um, an apprenticeship, or straight into the workforce. Um, I, I know that you guys are well prepared because uh, you guys are all now program completers of Edison. Um, program completers of 2021, on behalf of Shapiro and Duncan and the construction industry, I wish you all the very, very best. Congratulations. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce <laughs> our second guest speaker, Ms. Irene Nikwe. She graduated from Wheaton High School in 2008, was a student of mine in advanced placement biology, and is a completer of the health professions program at Edison. She is currently a management consultant. to speak with you all. As a virtual guest speaker, my name is Irene Nikwe and I graduated in 2008, class of 08. So um, I'm so happy for you all as you enter into this momentous um, time in your life. And I think that if I could share a little bit of my story, I hope it will encourage you and it will also um, give you the opportunity to see the, the different um, doors that being in a school that focuses on technology, that focuses on the sciences, um, how it can help propel you in your career and also for your own personal discipline. So I graduated class of 2008 um, from Wheaton, but I also attended um, Edison for the medical careers program. And then following that, I had the opportunity to attend the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Tar Heels all day. Um, and over, and at, in, in North Carolina, I had the opportunity to be pre-med, but I also study international studies. And this will make sense as I segue into what I do now. So um, I did global health and then I focus on management and program design and all of that. And so having that opportunity, um, I was able to volunteer at the hospital. I was um, able to travel to Uganda where I worked um, for a summer with um, children and mothers who were infected with or affected with HIV AIDS. And so um, I had this opportunity to help me see the management side of running health programs and help me to see how hospitals are run and how in lower and um, lower um, economic 
um, countries that how healthcare is not always as accessible as it is to us in the States. Of course, COVID has shown us that we're all, you know, we're all dealing with a lot of things, whether you're in a developed country or not, but this has been a great opportunity um, for us to kind of level the playing field and make sure that everyone has access to healthcare. With that said, I want to caveat into my next point is that after um, I graduated from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, I had the opportunity to attend grad school at George Washington University. And here is where I really got into project management. Um, and the opportunities that I saw and the discipline that I had from being in a tech school of technology, it exposed me to different things and, and it allowed me to look at how I could use digital or um, digital innovation to do some of my projects. So luckily for me, when I graduated from grad school, I started working at Johns Hopkins, you know, um, Johns Hopkins Medicine. Um, there's a the university side and then there's the healthcare side. And there I helped to set up one of the um, first, well, the first office of telemedicine. And that was a great opportunity because we used technology to interact virtually with patients and, and give them the opportunity to see their doctors in real time and then also get the care and the consults, consultations that they needed in, in real time. That was a great opportunity, learning about video visits and all of that. And from there, and being that Johns Hopkins is one of the largest health institutions in the world, I was exposed to a lot of different things and it segued into the next part of my career. So currently I'm a management consultant. I actually live in Ghana, West Africa, and living in Ghana has been the most amazing experience of my life. Um, what I do there currently is I work on various projects which are related to digital innovations, um, for either government agencies or also for private industry. I work closely with one of the banks to managing digital innovation projects and looking how we can use technology to automate manual, service, uh, manual processes within the financial sector. And that has been a great opportunity for me. So as you can see, you don't have to fit yourself into one bubble. You really just have to get give yourself the opportunity to explore and see what works for you. For me, my skill set is that I am a good project manager, but I also love technology. So having both sides um, helps me to, to delve into different situations. And then what I do is I take those skill sets and I apply it wherever I go, no matter what the project that I get. One of the things that I also love is that being in the technology space has allowed me to explore other venues such as cybersecurity, as um, taking certifications so that I can further my education in the technology space. For me, it's good to be to work with the technology um, um, partners, but it's also good to understand their world. Whether or not I take that and, and go a little deeper with it and become, you know, a professional in the cybersecurity world or in the IT world, I still think that regardless, being able to work with them has given me the opportunity to see how I can match my previous skill sets and help give real solutions for real people that make sense and are practical. So with that said, I want to encourage you that do not fit yourself in a bubble, whether you're studying engineering, whether you're studying healthcare, what you think you're gonna major in could change. It absolutely could, but make sure that you stick to what you're good at and what also is helpful to the communities that you are coming from or the communities that you serve. Do not let anybody, there's seasons in your life. In one season, you may want to do something related to healthcare. In another season, you may want to do something related to tech. In another season, you might merge those two and see the synergies between both and do something like telemedicine, which I did. So please, I encourage you to explore and to look at some of the issues that are going on in our world and see how you can be part of that change. I love you all, I'm so proud of you all, and I wish you nothing but the best. Bye. That was a wonderful message. And at this time, we're going to transition into our programs at Edison, each with a student speaker and each with recognition. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Shamsula Ayubi, the student speaker for the CREA program. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shamsula Ayubi, a CREA student here at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. First of all, I would like to congratulate all of you for getting through this pandemic and congratulate all of the students graduating this year and we'll start a new adventure. 
I have been at Thomas Edison High School of Technology student since I came to the U.S. one and a half years ago. I needed to get my high school diploma to be able to apply for college. For that, I needed to take the GED test. Edison High School helped me to achieve that. I have already passed three out of four GED tests thanks to the Korea program. I also study cybersecurity here at Thomas Edison. That was a great experience. I learned how to protect ourselves from cyber attack and so on. I would like to add that Thomas Edison High School of Technology has outstanding teachers and staff. Their passion for teaching and dedication to their students is priceless. I feel so truly lucky to have been part of this great school. Thank you to all the teachers for their inspiration and passion for teaching. Congratulations to our CREA students who work tirelessly to develop their language and math skills in their academic courses. Many students pass GED exams through extensive classroom and personal preparation, while others achieve readiness to sit for their final exams. Some will continue preparing with Montgomery College. CREA students also excelled in their CTE courses, developing skills, tools, and knowledge that they will need to enter the workforce, including job placement and industry certification. Students developed community through participation in community-based workshops and presentations while cultivating their own leadership skills through planning, preparing, and leading community-focused events on their own. Many congratulations to you. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Jessica Mejia Garcia, the student speaker for the Automotive Cluster. She is a senior at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. Hi, I'm Jessica Mejia Garcia. This is my second year at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. I'm a program completer of the Automotive Cluster in Automotive Technology II with Mr. Page. Attending Edison has impacted my life by introducing necessary skills like how to diagnose, do maintenance on cars, and how the components work together to give the car functionality and comfort to the driver and passengers. The staff in the auto program help start your career by explaining jobs within as well as out of a dealership or an automotive shop. They also have representatives from trade school present to give you some options after you graduate if you want to continue your education in the automotive industry. All these aspects from Edison and staff help you decide if you know you want to work in the automotive industry but don't know where to start. As the only female in the Automotive Technology 2 class, I had to step out of my comfort zone in order to learn in the classroom and apply that knowledge in the lab when working on vehicles. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, only 9.9% are women as of 2019. There are about 33,990 job openings as of 2021 and 71 right here in Montgomery County. If you strive for some college or an associate's degree, you can earn an average income of 41,680 compared to the 38,195 with only a high school diploma or less. Attending Edison is the best way to jumpstart your future. As we move through the rest of the program, a brief summary written by the teacher will complement each program. The names of students signify that they have successfully completed the requirements of their program. Auto Collision 2020-21, a school year like no other. As we learned how to use new technology together, we were able to pass the SP2 safety exam. We experienced together how to do body fillers, plastic repair, paint prep, and spray painting while practicing for our ASC certifications. A job well done in, e in these trying times. Congratulations to our automotive collision and repair students. Con 
Congratulations to our Automotive Technology II students who have persevered through the challenging school year. Even though being out of the building for almost a year, the students worked hard to earn a number of ASE student certifications. Since returning to the building, the students have been honing their hands-on skills to prepare for entry-level positions in all levels of maintenance and light repair. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Sofia Castablanco, the student speaker for the construction cluster. She's a senior at Damascus High School. Hi, my name is Sophia and I am a graduating senior and architecture program completer at Thomas Edison High School. I appreciate very much that I was able to attend the school for many reasons. Through this program, I received a lot of experience and wonderful opportunities that I would not have encountered had I not been a student at Thomas Edison. This program helped me find my future career. Architecture has completely changed my way of thinking. The world is much more interesting now seeing it through the eyes of an aspiring architect. I analyze the exterior of houses and I pay attention to details such as the lighting in the buildings I enter. Thanks to this program, I was able to enroll and complete two college classes for free. I learned how to use multiple architectural software programs and learn many of the basics required to design a building. I feel confident that I have a head start entering to college to study architecture. I encourage everyone interested in architecture to take this program. Not only is the teacher amazing and supportive, but the class, the studio, is a wonderful creative and cooperative space. If you're active in class, you will leave with a strong base in architecture that almost no other student going to the field has. I would like to thank Mrs. Dalakon and my classmates for supporting me throughout my journey and always being there when I needed help. I know now, as we go our separate ways, we will be successful in whatever we choose to become. Thank you. Students in the Principles of Architecture and CAD Technology program experienced many successes this year. In addition to learning fundamental principles of architecture, level two students presented a design proposal of the Young American 44 house project and received positive feedback on their projects. Our program had two winners in the Axel Sustainable Design Competition and are moving forward to state and national competitions. All students have spent the year preparing for AutoCAD and Revit certification and will be taking it before the end of the school year and during the summer. Our students should be proud of the work they have accomplished this year. You have risen to the challenges and make Edison proud. The students in the carpentry program have strived to engage virtually as well as in person. They were able to accomplish reading a tape measure to the 16th of an inch all the way to identifying and handling the swing of doors. Since they have been back in the building, students were able to complete various YA42 job site tasks to help facilitate the completion of the student built house project. Students are looking forward to using their skills they have learned to pursue their future careers in carpentry. Electricity Students 2020-21. We made it through another year. We had our ups and downs each day, but pushed forward together to complete our NCCER modules, core, and that was level one and level two. We also had students receive OSHA 10 hour safety certifications. The electricity students were able to develop their hands-on skills at the student built home YA42. Completing all of the electrical devices, lighting features, appliances, front yard lamp post, and a garage door opener. To all the students, a job well done. 
HVAC students had a fruitful year. They completed the installation of HVAC heating and air conditioning units and the duct system of the house number 42. The student house project. With the experience, students gained skills and knowledge on how to properly install the furnace condensing unit, set up line set, brazing and soldering, recovering and recharging Freon system wiring and uh, thermos thermostats, installing humidifiers and so much more. Most of the students also passed the NCCR certification tests for core curriculum, OSHA 10 and HVAC level one and two. I am so proud of this year's HVAC students. Soar high and good luck on your next endeavor. The masonry students had, had overcome many obstacles this year. When I asked the students about their experience in the masonry program, both last year and this year, they reflected on the realistic experiences and life lessons they received while laying brick and setting stone on the Young American House Project. Certifications earned while attending Edison include NCCER Core and Masonry One, OSHA 10, and the Maryland State Erosion and Sediment Control Certification. Earning the statesman pen and leadership skills while attending Maryland's Skills USA Fall Leadership and also the CTE Job Fair. The masonry students are prepared for the world of work in the 21st century. Congratulations to the plumbing students who have successfully begun their journey into plumbing theory and practice. These students have successfully read and developed plumbing schematics and received their OSHA 10 and track pipe gas fitter certification. Students have completed the hands-on knowledge needed to become successful plumbing apprentices. Using their plumbing knowledge, students have planned and coordinated the plumbing in the young American student built house. It is my pleasure to introduce Adam Zolin, the student speaker for the service cluster. He is a junior at Walter Johnson High School. Hello, my name is Adam Zolin. I'm a lump fitter here. This is my first year at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. I am currently in the hospitality program with Mr. Podek. I will be a program leader at the end of the school year. My time here at Edison has taught me a lot of new skills. I have learned how how to works, how hospitality works, and even how to manage people. Our shows come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are on land and some are at sea. Every hotel is managed differently than the next. Working in hotels, you come across many different people. Being in the hospitality program, I learned about time management, organization, and how to take care of others. My time here at Edison has been a great experience. Being a student here has taught me how to communicate a lot better with others, like adults and students. And communication has always been an issue for me ever since I can remember. I was granted the privilege to obtain the ServSafe certification. And ServSafe is the ability to know how to handle food or items without spreading germs or diseases. So all of this online schooling won't happen again. My plans for the future is to return back at Essen next year and be part of the restaurant program. Once I have once I have to leave high school, my goal is to go to high school and go to college and major in hotel management and culinary arts. I'm sure working with people and I want to continue to do so once I graduate high school. My message to students who are here, as a band skill at once said, we will survive even if we crawl off the finish line. I always think it as, as try, no matter what, just try. Every punch you take, 
you'll, get, you'll still get the finish line as long as you don't give up. The students in the cosmetology program have invested their time and effort in three rigorous years needed to earn 1500 clock hours. During their time at Edison, they have been fully immersed in the application and knowledge for both the science and art principles in caring for the hair, nails, and skin. Prior to the pandemic, these cosmetology students had demonstrated hands-on applications and communication skills during client consultations and use their artistic creativity as well as their problem solving skills to give beautiful makeovers to senior citizens and other clients who visited Edison's student managed salon. This year, they have focused on working on time drills for a diverse range of salon specific skills and sanitation rigors required to earn the Maryland State Board Cosmetologist License. These technical and business skills are also tested in SkillsUSA competitions and international organization. This year, we are elated to have a senior who earned a gold medal in nail care at the state level. She will represent Edison and Maryland when she competes at nationals in June. We are proud of all our seniors for their perseverance and adaptability during these times. Students completing cybersecurity have been well prepared for the demands of college curriculum and industry credentials and certifications. Students mastered a variety of cybersecurity skills by applying knowledge through their participation in actual and virtual exercises, including preparation for cybersecurity competitions, as well as the CompTIA Security Plus certification exam. Through the Cisco Networking Academy, they have earned both the Introduction to Cybersecurity and the Cybersecurity Essentials certifications. In graphic design, students are given challenging real world projects and assignments typical of the graphic communications field with a focus on theory, the creative process, technical software skills, and workplace preparedness. Students learn the latest in digital imagery, graphic design, print, digital media, and marketing skills using industry standard photo editing, presentation, illustration, and drawing, multimedia, and web design software packages. Classroom and lab activities include a variety of hands-on design experiences, class discussions and critiques, open-ended problem solving and presentation skills. Students draw upon academic skills in the areas of mathematics, science, language arts, and technology. The Academy of Health Profession students were able to persevere through virtual school and adapted hands-on patient care to gain three nationally recognized certifications. Medical assistants and nursing assistants have extensive daily contact with patients, assist the medical staff to perform procedures and play a key role in the lives of their patients. These highly skilled students are entering into the fastest growing career field in America which offers versatility, flexibility, good pay and benefits, as well as job security. Congrats to these healthcare providers for choosing a challenging path that leads to infinite future options. This year has been a challenging one for the HTMP students. We did the best we could to balance the frustrating world of hybrid learning with hands-on experiences. I am so proud of my students who have earned their Serve Safe Food Protection Manager certification. I wish this year could have been different, 
but it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know these amazing scholars. The Law Enforcement and Leadership Program introduces students to opportunities in the criminal justice field through examination of the foundations of law enforcement, law enforcement and emergency preparedness, and the administration of law and justice. To be a completer for the Law Enforcement and Leadership Program, a student must complete a second year through dual enrollment with Montgomery College in criminal justice or an internship with the criminal just in the criminal justice field. Congratulations to our students that completed this program. Network Operations is an exciting course that helps students prepare for college information system majors and lucrative technical industry certifications. The focus of the program is to prepare students for CompTIA a core certification through hands-on labs and instruction. This year's students took advantage of these opportunities and we are very proud of them. Professional restaurant management students have experienced many things this past year. We have explored regional cuisine from around the United States and created food truck concepts based on students chosen food region. Our students learned the importance of properly costing food sales items for profit and how to hustle a product in a demographic specific environment. In-person students achieve Serve Safe Food Protection Manager cert cert certification and Montgomery County Food Handler licenses. All students learn production of whole proteins, grain cookery, eggs to order, sauces, stocks, and soups, vegetable preparation, and so much more. While time in the kitchen was limited, our students made the best of the pandemic learning options and have gained valuable skills to allow them to work and thrive in an ever-changing industry. Great work, kitchen fam. In closing, I would like to thank the students, their families, our MCPS family that came together this evening to celebrate our program completers. We appreciate your time and share in your pride for the accomplishments of our students. And as you know, it doesn't stop with this event this evening. We also will be meeting at Edison tomorrow for an in-person celebration in our bus loop. I invite all students and families that have completed a program to come to Edison tomorrow morning at your designated program time to receive your graduation stole, certificate of completion, yard sign, and gift bag. You will remain in your car as you drive through the bus loop, but there will be an opportunity for a photo at the back of the building. We'll see you all then. Have a wonderful evening.